This episode of the Brilliance Plus Passion Podcast is brought to you by the Podcast Reach System. Are you ready to exponentially reach more profitable customers? Launching and hosting your own show is your proven best solution for networking, client attraction, and establishing your celebrity expert brand. Visit www.podcastreachsystem.com and claim your rightful place as the leading star of your industry so you make a difference for your community, market, and audience. Welcome to the Brilliance Plus Passion Podcast. Join us as we celebrate entrepreneurs, business creators, and brilliant minds who reveal what they are doing to make the world a better place by being part of it. Be sure to visit our website at www.brilliancepluspassion.com. While you're there, subscribe to us via your favorite network. Now sit back, lean in, tune in, get your notepad and two pens ready, and let's get started. My name is Adam Homey. I am your host, and I am honored by your wise decision to tune in and invest in yourself today. Right now, we are speaking with e-commerce expert Greg Jamison. Let me tell you a little bit about him. He's an Inc. 500 award-winning entrepreneur, and the author of the number one best-selling books, Amazon's Dirty Little Secrets and The Influencer Effect. Greg is partnered with some of the most successful influencers on the internet, and he's also the host of one of my favorite podcasts, which I've been subscribing to for years. Greg Jamison, welcome aboard. Thanks, Adam. I am super excited to be here with you, and this is going to be a lot of fun today. Oh, it's going to be epic. <laughs> First question, how does the work that you do make the world a better place for your clients, customers, and society at large? You know, it's one of those things where... Uh, the work that I do for people absolutely makes their life better. And as a result of that, I think that, you know, if I'm making somebody else's life better, then they have the opportunity to go out there and make the lives better of all the people that they serve. So I, I think it's a trickle down effect in that, that regards. Yeah. What is it exactly that you do? Basically, I help people sell more online whether it be okay. creating an e-commerce web store for them or helping them market the e-commerce web store that they already have. Great, great, great. In your experience, what are the three most common questions that people general people in general have when they're asking about what you do, like the FAQs? You know, the number one thing that people always ask, uh, th they started asking this years ago and they still ask it to this day, is how do I get on page one of Google? Okay, uh, which is obviously not a, a one sentence answer. But right. uh, th the other thing that they ask is, you know, why is this so expensive for me to have a website? And the other thing is, uh, how come I'm not selling anything? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, it's, it's funny. In our work with the podcast reach system, one of the biggest questions we get is, why do you tell us we have to have a separate website for our podcast? Why can't we just put on our existing website? Why can't we just use Podbean or Anchor? And there is an answer to that. It's actually a very detailed answer, not something that I can say in one sentence either, but it has to do with celebrity branding and your ability to attract advertisers and sponsors, not to mention the search engine stuff. It's another way to help propel you to the front page of Google. Greg, you know this. Uh, with Google, which is focused on Google, other search engines do similar things. When you have a podcast, there are several different ways you can optimize. You can optimize on the main search. Uh, you can optimize on the image search, which is one of the undercover things we guide our clients through doing. You can also optimize on the video search and bring that to the front page by having a YouTube channel. And Google also has a podcast search. And if your podcast is ranking, it may display your podcast episodes right at the top of page one. Yeah. And you know what a lot of people don't realize is Amazon now has a podcast search too. <laughs> yes, they do. Yes, they do. Uh, you have Audible. Uh, it's uh, one of those things that's not the easiest nut to crack to get on, but we have a couple clients that we've gotten on Audible and they're getting some great results from it. Part of which is 
is they get a lot of affiliate commissions for people who listen to their podcast. And then while they're there, they stop by Amazon to pick up their next order of cat food. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah. So what are three questions you wish people would ask? You know, the one that I really wish people would ask is uh, how much effort does it really take to make this website work? Because so many people seem to think that you can just put up a website and you're going to start selling stuff. And it doesn't work that way at all. <laughs> you, you know, you have to put as much uh, time and energy and effort into growing an online business as you do an offline business. And uh, that's something so many people don't really uh, understand. Uh, so that, that, that's probably the number one thing. Now, the second thing is, uh, what can I do to grow my own email list? I've got so many people out there that think that they can just rent an email list from somebody else and that that's going to oh, create goodness. the magic for them. <laughs> and, it, you know, it, it doesn't work that way, obviously, as you know. We, we, we have yeah. to have a way that we can actually grow our own list. And then, uh, you know, kind of going back to the first question, and in some ways, I guess, is, uh, do I have to advertise or if I'm not going to advertise, what do I have to do to actually start making this uh, whole e-commerce thing work for me? Yeah. And those are some very interesting questions. I know a lot of people that are into course creation. I've recently created a course myself, uh, the podcast reach system as a course, and we're getting some good results with it so far. But having been involved with other clients who have managed product launches, have products and services of their own, and then they say, why do we have to do all this product launch stuff, this product launch formula, this live launch method, and all these other things? Why can't I just, people know me, why can't I just send an email saying it's available and they'll buy? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. You and I are just <laughs> laughing and nodding because we know. So let's have a little bit of fun here and switch gears a little bit. What would people who know you be surprised to learn about Greg Jameson? Who know me or who don't know me? Who know you. Okay. I thought you, were, you said who don't know me, and I was going to say, well, the people that don't know me uh, would be surprised that I live in a log house that I built myself. Okay. Uh, people that do know me, uh, that would be... I don't know if there's a lot of surprises. I'm a pretty open book with everybody I know. Yeah. Yeah, in my experience with you, you're pretty uh, direct and pretty straightforward. So it doesn't surprise me that there aren't a lot of surprises. Uh, <laughs> now, I knew about the log cabin house, and in a way, I'm kind of envious. Uh, you're up in Colorado, I believe. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. I've been uh, up there a few times, and it's got its certain charms. Now, what do you hope people say about you when you're not around to hear it? I think the big thing is... I know that people, because they tell me this to my face, they think that I'm really smart, but I, uh, which I take as a compliment. But what I, what I really hope that people uh, think about me and say about me when uh, I'm not around is that I'm also really passionate about helping people. Yeah. If you could go back in time and change one thing you've done or one thing that's happened, what would it be and why? Probably... You know, I've had multiple businesses uh, throughout my career. I've always been an entrepreneur, uh, never having really worked for anybody else. And when I was uh, young and naive, I sold my first company. And if I look back on it now, I had no reason to do that. I mean, I, I know the reason why I did, you know, we, uh, we merged with another company and we went public and so forth. But the reality is, is that you just have to start over uh, once you've done something like that. And the the next company is not necessarily any better than the first company was. So I probably wouldn't sell uh, the first company. I would instead say, hey, what are some directions that we can go to uh, make this company grow and become the uh, e even bigger and better than what it is? Right. Right, which, you know, with the butterfly effect could change whether or not we were sitting here today. We could still be sitting here today, but we might be having a little bit of a different conversation. Who knows? Yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, what famous person, alive or dead, would you like to meet? And if you had the opportunity, what questions would you have for them? You know, when uh, when I heard you were going to uh, talk about that, I, I really was thinking, you know, who, who would I like to meet? And one of the people that I actually have had the opportunity to meet virtually, which uh, would fit into that category for me, I have not met him uh, in person where I've gotten to shake his hand, but it's Guy Kawasaki, who was okay. the uh, original evangelist for the Apple Macintosh. And he and I had a great conversation uh, one day, uh, just like you and I are having here, you know, it was a yeah. virtual conversation. So it was just him and I. And I got the opportunity to ask him, you know, what does it really take to have somebody evangelize your products or services for you? And we got into a lengthy conversation about that. And uh, so, so I, I'm very pleased that I actually got to uh, at least virtually meet somebody that I did want yeah. to ask a question like that too. Yeah, Guy's a pretty good guy. I have not had <laughs> yet had the experience that you've had. I saw him speak once and I thought he was pretty dynamic. What I love about him is on his social media, he'll occasionally share pictures of what it looks like through his eyes when he goes and appears on media shows like CNBC and when he does live streams and podcast appearances from his own office. And I see these podcasters who will invest $35,000 and their deluxe home studio with soundproof walls, five different mixer boards, 20 different microphones, four different cameras, three computers. <laughs> and then I see him with his laptop and his webcam, and he's got paper taped over his lights to reduce the glare. And you see the piles of stuff just stacked everywhere. And this is Guy Kawasaki, who you would <laughs> think would take the time to build himself a studio. So if he doesn't feel, if he feels that he can do it, over a laptop with a simple microphone and a webcam. Why can't you? Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. And, la and last I checked, his content's pretty good. Yeah, he, he's very good. And uh, and like you said, he he's a good guy as well. Yeah. So uh, what motivates you, Greg, and inspires you to keep going when you're having a tough time or facing a challenge? You know, I don't have a real... Uh, Backstory, I guess, is, you know, uh, where somebody died or uh, whatever, you know, that I have to to do things for. I, I've always yeah. just been really self-driven and self-motivated. And quite honestly, if I uh, if I have a bad time and I'm having a bad day or whatever, uh, the reality is, is I'll take a day off. Uh, that, that's one of the great things about working for yourself is, you know, yep. it's like, hey, let's just uh, go skiing for a day. Let's go on a bike ride. Let's go on a hike, something. Uh -huh. Take a day off, clear your head and come back and then realize that, uh, hey, there, there's a lot of things that you still have to offer and uh, and there's another way to work around whatever it was that the problem uh, was. So yep. you, you dive right back in. I remember this was about 12 years ago. I was having one of those really bad days and it seemed like I had had project bids out and everything else. And I kept hearing, no, 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 no. Well, it was a Wednesday morning and there was one I was really thinking was going to be a yes because they had been sending some yes signals. And that morning I got another no. I needed their money and I needed a project. I needed something new to stick my teeth into. So at that point I said, the hell with it. I just stood up, walked out and went down to park walking for a couple hours. Thing, hey, if everybody's going to say no, then fine. I guess you don't need me. I'll just go take a walk. Well, I took that walk. I turned off my cellular phone and everything else. Nobody was going to get a hold of me. So after I walked it out of my system, I turned the phone on, and it turned out that my assistant had been going through hell and high water trying to get a hold of me because that no I got that morning, they <laughs> said, oh, on second thought, yes. And then another one, in the meantime, had jumped out and said, we've reevaluated and we would like to say yes. We would just like to make some modifications on the deal. Can you meet with us this afternoon to do the wire transfer? Okay. <laughs> so to me, I just looked at that as I hit the reset button and it worked. Yeah, I, I think that reset button is really important because usually a no is, it, it's one of two things. It's either a not now, I'm not ready. Right. Or it is... Uh, 
it's simply that this isn't right for me, but you know, so many times when something isn't right for somebody, I've had people come back uh, and to me and say, Hey, I've got a friend or I've got a contact yeah. or a colleague or whatever that needs your services. And so a, a no is usually a timing issue more than anything else. I've discovered that. And I have been saying no to a lot of things myself. Uh, for those who want to pressure me and tell me, oh, this is a golden opportunity. You got to do this. If you don't do it, you're going to fail. Okay. If you want to pressure me, I'll give you a hard no right now. <laughs> but if you want, but if you want to continue the conversation, because I'm telling you, there may be a yes here. I'm just not in a position to say that yes for at least 90 days. Then who knows? And maybe within that 90 days, there's something else I say yes to. So I believe you keep your options open. You open conversations, knowing they not may not immediately lead to closed deals. You're planting seeds that grow into money trees, and you know you build a house out of a log cabin. So you're a man who knows a thing or two about trees. When you plant the seed, do you have an oak tree the next day? Not very often. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So finally, I know you have a special gift for our listeners. I will share that with them. But in general, right now, what is one thing that you would like our listeners to do as soon as they finish listening to us? I think the big thing is, and I sign my emails this way, is uh, don't go out there and live your life. Live your dreams. Wow, that's pretty powerful. So first of all, thank you so much for joining us today. It's been awesome. And before you go, here's what I know you want to share. I invite our listeners to go to Web Stores LTD. That's webstoresltd.com forward slash brilliance. What you're going to find when you visit that link is a great gift from Greg Jamison. It's a free mini course on how to create the perfect product listing. If you are agonizing over listing a product, this is something you need to download. Just like in my podcast reach system, we give people templates for their title tagline description, their episode write-ups, their intro and outro bumpers. When you have a template that unlocks your brilliance and your passion by focusing you on your unique contribution. So go to that link right now and download that. It's going to make a big difference. And with that, Greg Jamison, thank you so much for being with us today. It's been an honor and believe me in education. Thanks, Adam. Appreciate it. It's been great talking to you. You bet. Thank you for tuning into the Brilliance Plus Passion podcast, where we celebrate entrepreneurs, business creators, and brilliant minds who are making a difference for their community, market, and audience. Remember to visit our website at www.brilliancepluspassion.com and enjoy even more great episodes like this one. Again, while you're here, subscribe to us via your favorite network. We look forward to seeing you next time on the Brilliance Plus Passion Podcast.